and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be introducing another uh, pretty large camera from the 1920s. And the camera is uh, this camera right here. It might look similar to the Kodak 3A that I talked about a few months ago. And there's a reason for that. This is um, Ansco's answer to the Kodak 3A, and it is the Ansco 3A. So Ansco is a company that was a competitor to Kodak for quite a long time, um, starting in the late 1800s and going all the way through um, up into the 1970s. They were always kind of an underdog, um, and there's an interesting story between Ansco and Kodak that I will definitely produce a video on at some point, but it's pretty involved. So it's gonna be beyond the scope of this video. But um, Ansco is, has an interesting backstory, and they predate Kodak by quite a few decades. Now, I'm not gonna go into the history of Kodak versus Ansco, but what I do wanna point out for the purposes of this video is, if you take a look at this Ansco 3A, um, it's pretty obvious <laughs> it was a direct competitor to the Kodak 3A. It's almost identical um, in every possible way, but with a few interesting uh, differences, which I will get into in this video. Now, for those of you who watched my Kodak 3A video, you'll recall that this Kodak 3A that I reviewed is, I think, from around 1921. And I, I dated that Kodak based on a lot of the characteristics of this particular camera and then comparing them to a year-by-year -year catalog review, um, just to narrow it down to the date range when this specific camera was produced. Now, when I talk about the Ansco 3A, unfortunately, there's just not as much information out there about Ansco as there is for Kodak for obvious reasons. And so it's a little bit harder to get a precise date on cameras from Ansco. However, um, the characteristics of this camera, I believe, date it also to 1921. So interestingly, the camera that I'll be talking about today, the, the Ansco 3A, I think is from the same year as the Kodak 3A that I reviewed in my previous video, or certainly within a couple of years. So it would be, it would be a direct competitor of the time. Now, the Ansco 3A, like the Kodak 3A, is a very large camera. Um, and it takes roll film in the size 122. Now, as a direct competitor to the Kodak 3A, it uh, features a lot of the same characteristics as the Kodak 3A. So for instance, to open the lens board, there is a small button right here on the side of the camera um, hidden be beneath the leather that you press, and that releases the lens board. And then, um, just like the Kodak 3A, you pull the lens board down, lock it into position like that, and then you reach in and you have to manually extend out the lens standard. And you basically pull it out until it hits its stop, just like the Kodak 3A. Now the difference with the Ansco 3A is once the lens standard has reached the stop, um, the method of focusing is a little bit better uh, on, the, on the Ansco 3A in that you can see, just like the Kodak 3A, there is a scale system here but the difference is with the Ansco, once you've got the lens standard locked into place, as you adjust the focus um, by pushing down and then moving the focus control, it brings the lens standard with it. Unlike the Kodak 3A where you have to preset the, the focus on the focus scale and then pull the lens standard until it stops at that stop. This one actually brings the lens board with it as you focus. Now the Ansco 3A that I have, um, again, just like the Kodak versions, came in a wide variety of different quality levels. This particular camera is virtually equivalent in terms of quality levels as the Kodak 3A. It features a kind of mid-range lens, just like the Kodak 3A. So the lens on this one is the Modico Anastigmat. Modico was one of the lens names that Ansco used. Um, the Ansco version here is an f7.5, uh, so it's slightly faster <laughs> than the f7.7 of the Kodak 3A. This Ansco also features a slightly better shutter in that it has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven speeds from one second up to one fiftieth of a second, and of course, bulb and time, as was common at the, in the era that this was produced. 
The ANSCO 3A also features lens movements, just like the Kodak 3A. They're actuated a little bit differently than the Kodak 3A. So the ANSCO 3A, rather than having a screw mount system, has a lever system, and you just move that lever up and down for rise. And then, uh, just like the Kodak 3A, for the lateral shift, there is a friction release actuated by this lever here. And once you release that friction lever, then you can uh, shift the lens laterally. Now, one of the uh, maybe stranger features of the ANSCO 3A, and I don't know if this was uh, due to copyright from Kodak, You'll recall with the Kodak, if you wanted to do tabletop shooting, there was a little uh, kickstand that, that popped down from the lens board itself. The ANSCO is quite a bit more complex. There is a lever on the side that swings around just like this and then comes down below. So this lever here comes down below to prop up the camera on tabletop for tabletop use in the vertical format. And then if you wanted to do horizontal format on the other side of the lens standard, there is a similar folding kickstand that pops down just like that. And then that allows you to do horizontal on a tabletop. Uh, so a little bit more, more involved. I will say the ANSCO system feels a little bit more secure. And I don't know if they chose this kind of unusual system because it is a little more secure or if they chose it because there were um, copyright issues with the Kodak 3A. Now the other part of the ANSCO 3A that I would say is a little bit better, uh, actually quite a bit better than the Kodak 3A is the viewfinder. So just like the Kodak 3A, it features a brilliant viewfinder. All that means is that there's a simple mirrored viewfinder here which allows you to look down um, into the viewfinder and then that will give you a view of what the camera is shooting. The ANSCO system is a little bit more advanced than the Kodak system in that uh, just like the Kodak system it turns to accommodate the two positions but unlike the Kodak system the viewfinder in this one is actually geared to rotate into the correct position depending on which position you have it in unlike the Kodak one which simply has kind of a cross and then you, as the user, have to decide um, which one of the two crossing uh, viewfinders is the correct one for the angle that you're shooting from. On top of that, the ANSCO has this little hood here for the viewfinder, which makes uh, viewing in the viewfinder a little bit easier, especially in uh, bright light conditions. Now, this particular copy of an ANSCO 3A is uh, unfortunately not in as good a condition as my Kodak 3A. The bellows, as you can see, are pretty worn, um, and they did have quite a few light leaks in them. I had to uh, essentially paint those light leaks closed with black fabric paint, and hopefully that will work enough to, to fire off a roll here. But um, what I intend to do is take a full roll of 122 in the, in the ANSCO 3A, and then provide a short comparison to the Kodak 3A, and of course, as usual, show you the results if I get any. Knock on wood. <laughs> so stay tuned and we'll see what this camera can do. Okay, we're gonna load film in the ANSCO 3A. And if you've watched my video on the Kodak 3A already, then uh, this is gonna look pretty familiar. <laughs> um, again, I'm gonna be using Kodak's Veracrome pan in size 122. Uh, this particular roll expired in June of 1968, um, so it's about 55 years old right now. Now, um, the 3A loads very similarly to the Kodak 3A. Um, on the ANSCO 3A, the entire back comes off. The mechanism on the ANSCO, I would say, is a little bit better um, than the Kodak. There's just a little sprung tab here. You just push it down and it releases off of the little tab. And then this side is um, not hinged, it just has a little lip that grips inside. So the back comes off completely. Now like uh, with the Kodak, once you have the back off, um, you've got full access to the entire inside of the camera. So loading the film is quite easy. Now the ANSCO has, uh, again, a little bit better system here for keeping the film tensioned. There is a film holder tab on what will be the uptake side, um, and it's actually on a actual spring. It's not sprung steel, 
like you see so many other camera manufacturers make. So I have uh, high hopes that that will keep the film nice and taut as we're, as we're using it. Okay, um, loading procedure is pretty much the same as the Kodak 3A. So the first thing to do is to release the old spool, which is held in place by two um, little tabs. The spool comes out. This is the old spool that will become the take up side. Okay, then once that is locked in place, then I'll pop the, the other retainer in. And you can see the wind mechanism is now ready to go. Okay, now we'll open the old film. I like to try to not damage the box uh, because I do like to keep these old boxes. They're, they've got their own little style um, and it's nice to keep these as kind of historic artifacts. Now, if you've watched my Kodak 3A video, <clears throat> then you'll remember um, how much I went on about the size of 122 film. So I won't bore you with that same discussion here, but I, I mean, I can't help but point it out. This is such a big film <laughs> for a roll film, um, about three and a half inches wide. So you can see this is original film. It's still got the paper seal on it. Take that seal off. Okay, now, um, again, a big film with a big film leader. And what I like to do, if I can, is try to get the, the take-up side fed first. It's very important, especially on a film of this size, to make sure that backing paper is as taut as you can keep it. Um, and then also make sure that the the feed film, this, this side of the film, is kept taut the entire time so that it doesn't come unraveled um, or loosen while you're loading the film. Now, again, this film is so big, and I mentioned this on my Kodak video, that just one simple wind, and look at that, I've already, I've already seen the, the load warning bars, which are these two bars here. I'm already seeing the four arrows that typically show up through the window. Um, so I'm going to put the back on immediately before we get any farther. Okay, there we have it. Film is loaded. Now all I have to do is move the film forward. And I'm watching for first the arrows to appear, the ones we just saw when the back was off. There's, there's the first arrow. Now if I keep going, I should see the words Verichrome Pan show up. They go kind of slowly just to make sure I don't go past it. There's, okay, there's Verichrome Pan. And right after that is frame number one. So there we have it. The camera is ready to go, set to frame one, and we'll take it out shooting and see what this thing can do.
Okay, let's talk about these pictures and walk through some of the issues I was having with them. Um, overall, I will say the film performed really well, um, as expected, so I was very excited about that. However, the first two images, as you can see, uh, <laughs> I simply didn't focus the camera correctly, and that's 100% user error. The issue is the camera has uh, two different scales, one for the use with film and one for the use with plates. Um, and I knew this before I had started shooting, but I just completely forgot about it. And when I went to focus these first two images, unfortunately I had it set for infinity for the uh, plate scale and therefore it was out of focus for film, as you can clearly see. I'm really disappointed in myself for having made this very basic error. Um, I think these two pictures in particular would have been really great had they been in focus. But that's how it goes sometimes, and I learned from this experience, and I'm pretty sure I won't make that mistake again with this camera. The next thing to talk about is obviously the issues with light leaks. This image shows uh, most clearly uh, the problems I was having with light leaks, and I suspect obviously I didn't quite get the bellows sealed up as, as light tight as I would have hoped. So um, ultimately they'll have to be replaced, but maybe I can repair them a little bit better uh, for another round of photos. This was clearly the best photo of the bunch. Um, I will say there's still a little bit of light leak along the lower edge, as you can see. So I think that's consistent with some of the other photos too. It's just a little less apparent here. But overall, this was definitely my favorite photo of the set of six. Uh, these were the four best. There are only six in a roll on 122 film. So this one that we're looking at here was definitely my favorite. Okay, I want to close out the video with a little uh, comparison of the different film sizes. I meant to do this on my Kodak 3A video, but I uh, forgot to. So um, taking the opportunity here to show you the difference. So this is a one foot ruler. And for comparison, this is a short strip of 35 millimeter film. Each frame on this is 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters. This is two frames, although you can only really see one frame, of six by nine. This is 620 film, but it's exactly the same size as 120 film. Um, these are 6 by 9 negatives, so this is about the largest standard negative size that you'll see on 120 or 620 film. And then for comparison, <laughs> let's take a look at the 122 film. Uh, it's a little curled, so I have to hold it down. But, I mean, you can see that is, that is quite gigantic uh, compared to the 6 by 9, 620, or the 35 millimeter frames. This negative size is, like I've said before, three and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. And that three and a quarter inches by five and a half inches, that's over 13 times the size of a standard 24 millimeter by 36 millimeter, 35 millimeter frame. And it's even more than twice the area of a six by nine frame on 120, or in this case, 620 two and a quarter times that area. So it, it's, it's quite a large negative. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. Um, I'm at about the 20 minute mark here, so I don't wanna go too much longer. Again, I will have another video posted at some point to talk about the ANSCO history and especially um, the ANSCO versus Kodak story. It is quite interesting. But for this video, I hope that you enjoyed it and thank you for joining me. And I hope to have another video posted soon. Thank you.